everyone, today's tutorial will show you how to recreate this canvas. Um, I've tried to keep everything quite simple in the fact that I've used only a certain uh, colour scheme, I've used a limited um, amount of different products so that um, everybody could recreate this fairly inexpensively, probably with lots of things that they've already got at their disposal. And I wanted to keep the techniques quite basic so that if you're a beginner to art journaling or mixed media, that you would be able to break down some of the elements on how these kinds of things are created. So we're starting off with a box canvas and uh, mine measures 12 by 12 and is one inch in depth. I've got four colours that I'll be working with, so I've got a kind of turquoisey teal colour. Um, I'm not going to give you all the brands and the colours because it really, the chances are that you've got different makes to me, but the, the point is that I've limited my colour palette to four colours. One of them is quite light, which is the sandy cream colour, and then I've got a contrast between my purples and my uh, sort of turquoise colour. I've got a couple of paint brushes, a pencil, a black pen for outlining, and then I'm just picking out a couple of bits and pieces that I could potentially use to make marks on my canvas. I've got an old pen lid, a bit of Lego, um, a bit of um, Punchinella, and something similar to a credit card. And of course I've got my trusty old dictionary pages at the ready, and uh, you'll see how I use them later on. So I'm starting with quite a limited amount of um, products, so I'm hoping that that will help out somebody that's just starting on the road to um, trying out art journaling or mixed media. The other thing that I would say is if you are a beginner you could quite easily create this on a page rather than uh, on a canvas if you wanted to try it out first and uh, then once you felt comfortable with it you could transfer and uh, create the design on a canvas. So I'm going to begin by base coating the top of my canvas. I'm going to cover the sides later on so I don't really need to cover that but I will just go down the sides ever so slightly and as you can see I'm just spreading on my paint. Actually this will probably be a work of art in some art galleries. <laughs> Uh, but I'm not going to stop there. I've got some water on standby. I've got quite a wide brush to make a quick job of this and I'm going to spread this paint um, and cover my canvas entirely. Uh, better get rid of my sleeves so I don't cover them entirely in this turquoise paint. And you don't have to be too particular about this. You literally just want to get it covered because we're going to create lots of texture on top of this uh, with uh, what we do to, on the second coat of this canvas. So literally I'm just making sure I get rid of all that white. Once I've uh, covered the entire canvas then I'm just going to take a little bit of the paint and just wrap around the edges um, although I'm going to cover the sides of my canvas with paper, I'm just making sure that no uh, white canvas will be peeking through uh, when I finally come to wrap the edges. So I'm just coming down the sides a little bit with the turquoise paint. And then I'm going to dry that layer before I begin work on the next layer, where I'm going to show you how to start adding texture. Now the next step in our background is to bring some colour into the mix. So again I'll be using the turquoise but I'll be blending into that this lighter sort of pale yellow cream colour and some of the light lilac. So I'm just randomly dotting a few of those colours about my canvas and then again I'm going to use my big wide brush and I'm going to be blending those colours together. And I'm going to do that by a combination of vertical strokes and horizontal strokes. And I'm going to keep working on the canvas until I've definitely got some areas of colour about uh, the base of this canvas. So literally just spreading and blending and perhaps adding uh, where I've got this quite light area at the bottom. I'm going to add a little bit more teal and I just want a random background. So keep working it until you're happy with the end result. As you can see, I do seem to be getting the sort of pale yellow colour in one area and the lilac a bit more in the opposite 
uh, corner and that's okay I, I didn't have a plan but that's just the way it's working out and I'm just going to keep adding bits of colour and just blending them with those vertical and horizontal strokes until I'm happy with the background um, not being that flat turquoise colour anymore. I think I'm more or less there. Once you are happy then it's time to dry that layer off and uh, I'm using my heat gun to speed up that process but you'll find that actually acrylic paint does dry quite quickly so you know if you wanted to make a cup of coffee by the time you got back I'm pretty sure that it would be dry. So next I'm going to be using an old dry baby wipe or a new dry baby wipe. This is the one that I've obviously left open and I'm going to be using that as the applicator for my paint and I'm going to be using this Punchinella which is sequin waste as um, my stencil and I've just got this old piece of packaging which I use as a paint tray. So I'm going to be using the sort of sandy yellow colour and I'm also going to be using a little bit of the lilac. So all the paint colours that you see on this palette are dry apart from the two that I'm adding just in case you're wondering and uh, I'm going to be just taking a little piece of baby wipe turning it into a pad and dipping it into the paint and as you can see I'm dragging off on the paint palette so I haven't got too much paint on my baby wipe and then I'm pouncing the colour through the punchinella and uh, this could equally be a stencil if you've got a stencil in your collection um, but I just like the simple um, texture that this punchinella gives all these little circles and again I'm just being completely random moving the punchinella I'm avoiding the edges because I don't want any of that uh, any of the paint to go over that edge of the punchinella and just creating little patches of uh, lilac spots on my canvas I decided at this point not to use the yellow and instead I'm just going to create some more subtle texture with the turquoise paint. Again exactly the same way, just randomly moving the punchinella around my canvas and adding those dots. Don't forget to go off the edge of your canvas, it always looks a bit nicer if some of the uh, pattern is hanging off the edge of your canvas. So now I'm going to be using the cream and I've just got an old pen lid and I'm using it as a stamp. So I'm dipping it into the paint and then straight onto my canvas and just creating a few little patterns. Again, remember to go uh, towards the edge of your canvas and just be random. I think that's the trick to uh, creating a, a successful background. I was just trying out a different pen lid here, but I didn't like it. So I'm just getting rid of that with my baby wipe and I'm going to be using the lilac paint to add some smaller circles with a smaller pen lid. So, so far you can see that I've used little things that I can find around the house to create texture. Instead of the sequin waste, you could be using bubble wrap to make that initial first um, impression of texture on the background. Now I'm gonna use a piece, it's an old plastic ruler really, uh, but you could be using an old credit card or debit card or gift card to create a series of horizontal and vertical lines. So I'm dipping the edge of the plastic into the paint and then using it as a stamp to create a little bit more interest on my background. And you could equally be using stamps that you've got. If you're a little bit more of an advanced crafter, got a big, bigger stash at your disposal, you could be using those. But I'm keeping it simple as I'm kind of hoping that this will be tried by somebody that's new to mixed media. And I'm drawing off the uh, little stamped areas ready to go to the next step. When I look at this background, I don't know if you agree with me, but I think there's too much of um, a separation between my stamped layer and the background layer. So now I'm going to bring or soften that texture. And all I'm doing is with a dry brush, I'm dipping it into the paint just very, very, very slightly. So I've only got a little bit of paint on my brush and I'm using a technique called dry brushing to go over my areas that I've stamped and just blend them slightly back into the canvas. So by taking little touches of the lilac paint and cream paint, I'm actually just going over the pieces uh, that, or the areas that I've stamped just to soften them slightly. 
and I'm going to keep going on with this. I'm adding a little bit of the turquoise as well, which will make uh, some of the texture disappear, but it's a nice effect and it again, it just serves the purpose of softening that background. And then just keep working with that dry brush until you're happy that you've got a background that you like. Another way of softening things up a little bit is to uh, create a little bit of splatter. So I'm using my paintbrush. I've put a little bit of water into the paint to make it a little bit more runny. And then I'm just tapping the paintbrush onto my finger and uh, all over my canvas. Uh, this does create a mess, so be a little bit careful if you've got things around you. And I am then going back in with the dark purple this time, a colour that I've not used before, to create little areas of splatter on my canvas. You can see now that really uh, helps to just soften everything and bring everything together. And I'm going to dry everything off, ready to go to the next stage. So anyone that watches my mixed media videos knows I do like to use a little bit of uh, book page in my design somewhere and this one's going to have quite a lot so I'm just removing a few pages from an old dictionary and uh, I'm going to be using that uh, to create the design on this canvas. So if you go out there in the charity shops I'm pretty sure that you'll find, it doesn't have to be a dictionary, it could be a novel, just something that's got some printed pages that you could use to create your design. Again something that's really easy, you might have something lying around the house that you don't uh, need anymore and uh, you can use that to create the design on the canvas. Now if you're a little bit unsure you could draw your house shapes onto your um, book pages with a pencil if you want to but I'm going to be just getting straight in there with my scissors, cutting out a few shapes and altering them as I move them about on my canvas. So I'm creating a little house with a roof and a chimney pot and I need another house and a windmill. And the thing that I really just want to keep in mind is the height of my houses because I've got a little bit of detail at the top of the canvas and how wide they are because I want to fit in three houses and a windmill and I still want a little bit of room on the right hand side that I can fit the uh, final lettering of the words that I'm using on this canvas. So my windmill is created again with a long shape, it's not quite a, a perfect rectangle and that's what I want, I want this to look quirky and then I want a curved sort of, it looks a bit like a mushroom <laughs> uh, that's going to sit on the top of the windmill. So as you can see I'm making decisions about the size of the house or the house and the windmill as I go along and just trimming off the little excess pieces and because these shapes are simple that's quite easy to do. So I want one more house and I'm just going to make this a slightly different shape so I've got a, I think that's a trapezium if I remember my uh, math shapes correctly and this time I'm going to be using a triangle for the roof and another little chimney. So once you're happy that everything fits along your canvas you're ready to cut some of the smaller details. So moving on to some of the slightly more tricky shapes and I'm freehand cutting a branch here making sure that it's got a few branches on it that I can attach leaves to but it's still quite a simple shape. You could easily put your uh, piece of paper on your canvas and sketch out a uh, branch shape if you're not confident to do it freehand and then I'm creating just some little leaves or little pairs of leaves. I'm folding my paper and then cutting a, a random leaf shape for each of the branches and then I need another branch for the other side of the canvas. When you get to this stage you're ready to start uh, gluing some of those elements into position and I'm going to be using this uh, matte multimedium by Ranger and it's a kind of glue but it's um it's got a, a nice spreading consistency you can spread it with a paintbrush and it's not too wet so it doesn't soak your paper um, and it allows you to get a nice flat finish when you glue I mean these book pages are quite thin um, I'm adding a layer of the glue and then pressing it against the canvas, making sure that there are no wrinkles or as best I can making sure there are no wrinkles and making sure that the glue goes to the edge of each of the paper shapes so that um, there are no sort of free edges that you're going to catch with your paintbrush as you begin 
or carry on working on your canvas. So I've just realised that I've not got enough glue on this bottom section. I'm just adding a bit more glue and um, you can see that I've just overlapped the bottoms of these houses so that they go um, over the edge of the canvas slightly. Again, that will make sure that I don't get any white uh, edges or any free edges when I wrap the edge of the canvas. And then I've got my little house. I've created a little bit of a gap between the two houses and the windmill and uh, that's where my flowers will go later on. I'm just making sure all those corners are nice and flat against the canvas. I'm using a piece of scrap card just to make sure I don't get glue everywhere. And then I'm just adding my final house. You can see I just wrapped the uh, little pieces around the side of the canvas. Just thought my roof was a little bit tall there so I've just shortened it slightly and then attaching it in position and I am keeping things simple to people do. I'm not trying to be straight. Uh, this has got quite a whimsical feel to it and I've got two little branches to add next. The thing with your branches is to make sure that they're not too big, that you've got room to add the lettering on your canvas. And then I'm just adding pairs of leaves to each uh, of the branches that I've created. And then this second branch is just a little bit lower down. And still adding those little pairs of leaves to the ends of each of the branches. So you can see I've given up, keep going back to my little piece of card and I'm just using my hand <laughs> as my gluing platform. I don't really recommend that you do this. Um, it's just uh, sometimes you uh, just take the quickest and easiest route and it's just nice to get yourself all painty and gluey, uh, part of the creative process. One of the more tricky elements that we're going to cut, I've got my book page, I'm folding it in half and positioning it roughly uh, in place on my windmill top and then I'm just creating two um, little windmill, windmills, what are they, blades, windmill blades and I'm cutting them out in a double layer so that I get this sort of kiss shape. If you were a bit uncomfortable doing that you could create each of the blades singly and just um, put them into position. Creating them this way you've got a little bit of a delicate area in the middle of the four blades and obviously once this is wet with glue they do want to curl up and uh, stick to each other so it's a little bit tricky and um, I'm just maneuvering them carefully while I get them in position and then I'm smoothing them, smoothing them out uh, creating the finishing touches on my windmill. If you take a little bit too long to do it you might find that this medium dries so I'm just peeling up the areas where I don't think I've quite got enough glue and then re-sticking them so that they're nice and secure against the canvas. Now I've got two final little touches to add. I want two little birds and again I'm free handing them because it's just something that I'm used to doing but if I were you um, as a novice, uh, if you're not a, a drawer I would just have a look for some simple bird shapes on the internet and uh, copy a couple of those onto a book page. Uh, the trick is making sure that they're not too big and too heavy for your branches and I'm just using a simple leaf shape to create the wing as if he's merrily singing away on his branch and I'm going to create another little bird that's going to sit on the opposite branch. So that's my two little birdies stuck down. I've left room to draw in their legs so they're not completely right up against the branch and uh, I'm just clearing away all the bits and pieces of paper and we're ready to add a little bit more colour onto our book pages. So now I'm creating a little wash. So I'm adding some water to the paints that I'll be using and I'm going to be using the sort of cream colour and the darker purple and I'm just washing the colour over each of the pieces. So I'm starting with the yellow and you can do this as much or as little as you like. So if you want to be able to see lots of your book print through the paint, then keep your wash nice and light, plenty of water added to the wash. Um, I have wanted to add a little bit more colour, so once this layer is dry, I'm going to add a second layer of this lighter colour paint, uh, particularly the light colour. I, I probably won't need to do quite as much with the darker colours that I'll be using. 
So you can colour the same pieces as I have, or you can uh, decide which pieces you're going to do which colour for yourself. And again, that's all part of the creative process. You might begin as a beginner by copying something exactly, um, and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that because that's how you learn. That's how you uh, discover all the different techniques and perhaps how things work, how the paint uh, is affected by different papers that you use, um, how uh, doing the different techniques look when they're put together. I mean, you might not want to use all of the texture um, tips that I've given you on this video, but it's okay to use just the ones that you like. I mean, you might not like the circles, you might just like the splatter, you might not like the lines, you, you know, it's, it's up to you which pieces of this video that you use. Um, and as a uh, someone that's a little bit more uh, used to creating, then uh, you just take the elements that you like and then you add the elements of your own and suddenly you've got a piece of artwork that's unique to you. Next I'm going in with the darker purple, remembering to add water to your paint so that it becomes a little bit more transparent. And this, this colour, because it's darker, you'll be able to see more of your brush strokes. You'll also be able to see perhaps where you've caught the paper with your glue. Um, so if you see lighter areas appearing, that's exactly what that is. It's not something that really bothers me. Um, it's just part and parcel of the charm of uh, using all these different mediums. And uh, it's something that really won't show once everything's finished off. But I just wanted to mention it because if you're complete beginning you might think oh why is that paint looking a little bit lighter there than it is everywhere else and that's exactly what it is so any areas where you've got little touches of glue onto the paper you'll find that the, the paint doesn't take quite as much it's almost like it's a barrier to the paint um, it creates a little bit of a resist and I've also chosen to colour some of the elements with that same turquoise colour that I used on the background. I'm using the light purple for the branches and then again going into that uh, turquoise colour for the leaves. So before you dry all of this um, next layer off, just have a little look at the, the things that you've coloured over and perhaps if there's something you want to darken up a little bit or perhaps add a bit of shading to. So I'm just uh, blending that lilac into the turquoise on the leaves and I'm blending a little bit of the lilac wash onto the tummies of my little songbirds. And now it's back to my book page and I'm just creating some more shapes and adding windows and doors to my little houses and my little windmill. Again, it's about making those shapes a little bit random. Don't have perfect squares and perfect rectangles. It's uh, much more charming if things are a little bit haphazard and a little bit higgledy-piggledy. And then you're going to repeat that process of gluing everything down with the uh, matte multimedium. And then come back in with a wash. Now I kind of wanted to make that these uh, windows and doors almost look like they're holes in these buildings and that you can see the background behind them and I'm going to achieve that by shadowing and by colouring these in the same colour as the background. So I'm using the turquoise colour to colour each of my windows and doors. You dry off the glue first and then you can uh, paint each of those elements. So, so far we've created a background with paint and we've used paper to create the actual design elements on our canvas and now we'll get back to paint again to create the thing that I think brings your canvas to life and that's the shading that we're going to add to each of the shapes on our canvas and I'm going to try and describe how to do this to you. I've slowed it right down and as you can see I've added water to my paint and I've created a back a black line down the edge of the piece that I want to shade. Then I've washed off my brush, I've dried it on my kitchen roll, so each time I do this second, third run, I am cleaning my brush, 
and then I'm drying my brush and just blending out that paint. So you can see the paint runs in what is effect, in effect water that I'm adding to the canvas and gradually lightens. And then once you've got the amount of shading that you want, again, I'm just bringing that brush along to clean that edge and in effect stop that paint running. And I'm using my kitchen roll to keep my brush nice and dry because you don't want a huge puddle of water. This is definitely a technique that you want to practice. So I'm going to try and talk you through that again before I discuss uh, where we're going to put the shading. And I am going to just run the paintbrush along the edge. I don't always get this perfectly myself. You can see I've got a little bit less paint this time round. So if you've never done this before, and this is definitely the most tricky, I think, technique on this whole canvas, um, you definitely need to practice it. So I would paint a piece of um, paper, you know, like a watercolour paper, and stick some shapes on it, and then use that as your um, test ground just to see how this technique works. So add a little bit of water to your black paint, draw it along the edge of your shape, then clean off your brush and dry it off with your piece of kitchen roll and run it along the edge of that painted line. And you're gradually drawing that paint out so it fades away from the original black line that you created. And the other trick that you need to learn is where to shade. And this is quite simple uh, on something like this. This is an artwork where you've got to decide where the sun is and where the shadows are going to fall. We're keeping this quite simple and I have decided to shade along the left hand edge. So all my left hand edges will have shading and I'm also going to shade along the bottom edge of anything that I've got on my page. So I'm going to the left and the bottom and I'm keeping to that rule. And uh, by doing that, you'll get something that looks uh, fairly decent, as if you know what you're doing, which to me is uh, something that I don't. I, I don't ever uh, profess to be a great artist, but there are a few rules that you can pick up uh, that will um, definitely lend a uh, something that looks uh, visually uh, correct when you look at it. And I want this to look like it's popping from the page. Um, and therefore these shadows are being created by the shapes that we've put on our page and you can see already that uh, this house is starting to look like it's raised slightly from the canvas and it's just a trick of shading. I'm not going to show you all of this on um, camera, I've speeded everything up now just so you get an idea of how this starts to take shape the more shading that I add and don't forget that you're going to shade on the inside of your windows and it's this shading on your windows and doors that give you that effect that you can actually see through to the background, see through your house and your windmill to the background behind. So don't forget to do this element, it's quite important. And I'm also going to be shading all of my branches and my leaves. When you get to unusual shapes like these branches, it does become a little bit more tricky to work out what is your left side. Uh, not so bad on the actual bottom edge because obviously that's the underneath of your branch. But just do the best that you can. It won't it won't make make a huge difference if you get the odd one wrong. But you can see how this is just making everything pop off of the page and come to life. Once again, once you finish shading, you're going to dry off this layer completely and you need to make sure it's thoroughly dry before we move on to the next step. The next stage is the wording. You can use any quote that you would like, but you could also quote me. And uh, these are words that I uh, came up with when I originally created this design as an art journal page and I do like them, so I'm going to use them again. So I'm quoting myself and uh, feel free to use my little phrase if you want to. So I um, came up with the phrase when I was uh, originally working on this design, I will paint a beautiful world to live in because I can. And so it's just a little play on the fact that I'm creating this little um, world, this little quirky world of colour. And um, I th think it's quite a nice um, thoughtful phrase as well because uh, we can make the world 
uh, however we want as artists and as people really so I'm colouring my world my way and I hope you're enjoying colouring your world your way um, so I'm going over each of my letters and the lettering I've just sketched out with a pencil and very very lightly because we want to get rid of it afterwards if we haven't painted over it all and I'm also using a combination of capital letters and um, small letters and I'm also um, just most of my lettering I'm putting in the gaps that I've left in my design as you can see I couldn't quite do that with beautiful so I've just gone over the top of my windmill slightly and I'm just making sure that the paint layer is nice and thick so you can't see the background behind that's particularly important with the lighter colour and then I'm finishing off my quote by using the darker purple and I just realised that I was using these little hearts as the full stops on my uh, I, uh, the small letter I, and then I realised when I look, uh, that's not a paint spot on the word beautiful, that is, uh, it's one that I shall be turning into a heart. I quite often do that when I'm uh, making these videos, I can see little errors that I've, or omissions that I've made, and I go back and put them right, so I'll make, turn that little uh, dot on the word beautiful into a heart when I've finished editing this video. And again, I'm going over the whole of my design and drying it as I go. And I'm going to add this final little element, which is a couple of uh, stalks and leaves for the flowers that I'll be adding to my canvas. So keeping it really simple, really childlike, a stalk and a couple of leaves and some of the uh, flowers a little bit taller than others. So I've got one between the two houses. I've got two between the windmill and the house and I'll have one more at the end next to the windmill. Now we could quite easily have painted the flowers onto our final canvas design, but the nature of this kind of work is that it is multimedia and that we do want to use lots of different things to create our designs. So with that in mind, I'm gonna be using these paper flowers. Uh, as you can see, they're in the wrong color, but they're the right size. And uh, I'm going to paint my paper flowers to make them match the canvas. So you could punch flowers if you wanted to. Um, you could actually, as I said, paint the flowers on if you wanted to or you could freehand cut your flowers out of other papers. And um, I'm gonna be using these little preformed flowers and I'm gonna color them with paint. So a couple of tips if you choose to do this, if you, like me, haven't got the right color flowers, make sure that you work on a uh, scrap of old card or paper and also make sure that if you turn your flowers over to paint the other side that you don't let them dry and stick to your um, piece of card, which they will do. So you'll see that I paint the other side, even though I haven't waited for both sides to dry, and then I'm just moving them so they're very lightly sitting on the piece of card and don't stick to it. So I'm using the dark and the light purple to color the flowers that are going to be growing from the ground. I've also got one extra flower, which is slightly larger, um, that I'm colouring in the dark purple which will be in the centre of my windmill blades and then the other remaining flowers that I'm using as blossom I'm painting with the cream colour. This one takes a couple of coats because um, it's a slightly lighter coloured paint. Now I did decide to add a little bit of shading on my flowers but as you'll see with what I uh, decide to do next that's not entirely necessary you can do it if you like depends what how you're going to finish your flowers off it's quite a nice addition um, if you can have very small centers in your flowers but as you can see um, when we get a little bit further on I use something that's quite big in the center of my flowers in which case you can't really see the shading but just to let you know how I'm doing it I'm just adding a little bit of the coordinating color in the center of the flower and then using my brush or my finger just to blend it blend it out slightly towards the edge of the petals. And then once all your flowers are dry, you're ready to attach them to your canvas. And you'll find that because you've painted them, or if you have painted them, it makes them a little bit stiffer than they are normally, and it means that you can really shape them and lift them slightly from your um, canvas. 
Now as you can see I found some perfectly coordinated paper roses and I just had to use them on my canvas. So you could be using something similar or you could be using buttons, you could be using sequins, you could be using gems. Uh, so the sky's the limit on what you can actually put in the centre of your flower and uh, it's entirely up to you. Just make sure that it colour coordinates. If it doesn't you could paint it and um, I'm going to be using a combination of these roses and some buttons and I'm going to be attaching everything to my canvas using my PVA glue. I like this Cosmic Shimmer glue. Uh, I find that it's very um, strong when you're attaching elements like this as well as being good when you're um, working with paper. It's not too wet, it doesn't seem to wet your project too much. And to make sure that things are stuck down well, I'm just putting my finger underneath the area that I'm gonna press these roses down. And I'm just removing the little green backings of the roses. And then I'm uh, pressing from the back and the front to make sure that those paper flowers are stuck well to my canvas. I've also got one little flower to put on my windmill and then I'm using the two uh, layers of flowers to put on these little flowers that are growing in between the houses on the bottom of my canvas. And as you can see I am shaping the little flowers so that they're raised rather than flat against the canvas itself. It just adds another layer of texture and dimension to the design. And then finally I'm coming back and adding a couple of little buttons to the centres of those flowers and one more rose in the middle of my windmill. So again, these are the things that breathe the life into your canvas and uh, turn it from a flat painting into the uh, mixed media uh, look that we're trying to achieve. Next I want to cover the edges of my canvas and that will just give a chance for my canvas to dry off completely before we move on to the final step. So I'm cutting paper strips that are just slightly narrower than the edge of my canvas. So mine worked out at one and a quarter inches and I'm cutting enough strips that I know that I can wrap around the entire edge of my canvas. I'm going to cover the corners of my canvas first. So I've folded each of my or oh, two of my paper strips in half just to get them all the same length and then I'm going to fold each of those in half and they are going to sit around the corner of my canvas like so. And now it's just a case again of getting out your multimedium and wrapping each of those paper strips around each of your corners and then filling in with the longer paper strip along the edge. Now the trick here is to make sure that you glue everything down well. I'm adding my glue straight to the sides of my canvas and I am doing it half at a time so I've added one half and then I'm coming round adding the glue and wrapping the other half and I'm making sure that everything is pressed down well before I move on and I'm making sure that none of the paper sticks above the edge of the canvas as you look at it from the front so I'm making sure that it's just a millimetre down from that top edge. So I'm wrapping this second corner, sorry it's a little bit off camera. And then I'm going to cover that area in between. So again adding the glue to the canvas. And then attaching the paper strip and I'm making sure that the words are all running the same way and making sure that those top edges line up. And then I'm going to continue around the canvas wrapping each of the four sides. Once it's all wrapped I'm going to leave that to dry off before I move on to the next step on the edges and I'm going to start outlining my design. Now top tip, do not write on your canvas if your canvas is wet in any way. Make sure your canvas is thoroughly dry, otherwise you will ruin the pens that you choose to use to outline your project. And I'm going to be outlining using a Uni Pin Fine Liner and it's a 0.5 um, tip. 
there are lots of uh, pens out there on the market, uh, pens that you can um, create this kind of artwork with that will work on acrylic paint. And that's the main thing that you need to do. Just test that your pen, it could be a biro, so long as it works on your uh, surface. So you just test it on um, a piece of scrap. So paint a little piece of scrap if you want to let that dry and see if your pen works on that. And if it does, uh, then you're you, you know you're fine to go and outline your project with that and I'm just adding some little doodle details as I go along so I'm outlining each of the shapes and then I'm adding some patterns so I'm just adding some texture to my roof I'm adding a few lines I've added a little frill to the guttering of my roof and to the very uh, ridge line of my roof and it's all about just adding or having some fun with those finer details. Again, this is the time, um, if you're a newbie to this, where you might feel a little bit more confident because uh, now you've just got a pen in your hand, something that we use all the time, uh, just to create uh, some little details and textures of your own. Just go on, try your uh, ideas out. I'm adding a little bit of a um, roof to this window in the eaves and I'm adding some little um, tiled effect textures to the roof. This time I'm just going to add a little detail to the top of the window and the door and I'm adding some stonework to this house so it's all about using your imagination and seeing what you can come up with. So you're literally outlining everything that you've put on your canvas. I'm also outlining the words. I'm not being too uh, particular. I don't mind if I get a little bit outside or inside the lines. It's all about creating that sort of doodled look. It doesn't have to be completely precise. If you really um, have got quite a, a light touch, you might want to just, instead of trying to create just a single line around something, just sketch a line around it and it'll give it the project a whole new look. I really hope that this tutorial gives um, a newbie the confidence to try this, uh, to see that if you break the uh, elements of this canvas down step by step, each actual step is um, fairly simple. I think the shading is probably the hardest thing, but everything else, uh, outlining, um, texturing your background, creating the shapes and collaging the shapes onto your canvas. They're all quite simple steps, but each step that you add brings your canvas to life and makes it more animated. And I'm just adding little details as I go, little, little song notes coming out of my songbirds. I've added detail, or will be adding detail to the petals and the leaves on uh, my flowers and on the branches of my trees. And all those little details, as you add them to your project and as you build your project just brings everything to life. So once the outline is complete it's time to colour the edges of your canvas. I'm going to be using the turquoise and again I'm using that wash technique so that you can still see the paper through it but it's not quite such a stark contrast as if we left it plain. If you like that contrast you're more than welcome to leave the edges as plain book pages if you want to. I prefer it just to blend in a little bit more so I'm just adding a wash of colour all the way around that uh, paper strip. And the final finishing touches I'm adding some paint splatter to the sides and to the front of my canvas. This time I want it to be fairly fine splatter rather than tapping the brush on my finger as I showed you right at the beginning when we were creating the texture on the canvas. This time I'm taking a fairly stiff brush and I'm flicking the brush once it's loaded with paint, uh, sort of flicking the bristles of the brush and it just creates a fine splatter and I'm doing that all the way around the edge of my canvas and then I'm going to do that also on the canvas itself with all the elements in place and it almost like makes like a little, um, I don't know, like a pebble dash effect is the best way to describe it. Really faint splatter. I'm doing it in all the different colours and uh, it just gives that final finishing touch. A little word of warning, this is messy. Uh, it flicks everywhere. I've just realised I've flicked it all over the wall in front of me. Um, I'm doing it with a little bit of black as well as the colours that I've used on the canvas 
and it just brings everything together and uh, I quite like that effect. It's, if you don't like it, it's something that you can miss out altogether, but I like uh, the texture that it adds to the final design. But don't forget what I said, word of warning, it does go everywhere. So there you have it. I know it's a bit of a marathon tutorial, but it was aimed or is aimed at someone who's completely new to this. And I hope that I've given you lots of in-depth um, instruction that will give you the confidence to break these works of art down. If you've seen them and you think, oh, I'd really love to create that, but why well, I couldn't do that. If you see the steps, which I hope I've shown you here, to create a canvas like this, um, then you can get the confidence to try it for yourself. Don't forget to date and sign your work as I'm doing here and to enjoy the process. There's no right or wrong. You can use the colours that you like and you can create these canvases um, any way that you would like once you've got those techniques under your belt. And I hope that uh, you like this video enough to subscribe. Don't forget to share this with your friends if you've got people that you think will be interested in this. You can share it on Facebook, etc. And uh, I will share another link with you at the end of the video to more uh, mixed media tutorials that you might be interested in. Until next time, thank you for watching.